Hi everyone, I'm John. It's Tuesday, so I have a review for you. Last week you may have noticed that uh, I didn't appear. I got a little busy with that little American holiday called Thanksgiving. So what I plan to do is later on in the week, maybe around Friday to this week on Friday, to post another review to make up for it and then start back up with my regular schedule next Tuesday. Um, that's the plan, at least, tentative though it may be. So, for today, the book we're going to talk about is uh, certainly not my first read by this author, as I'll, I'll tell you in the review. This is The Noise of Time by Julian Barnes. I was just sort of scrounging around in half price books the other day, and this was on their clearance shelf for two dollars I think and I noticed it was his either last novel or next to last novel and the subject of the of the book is Dmitry Shostakovich who is um, a great classical composer so I have a deeply abiding interest in classical music so I thought um, because of my past reading experiences with Julian Barnes and because of my love for classical music that I would read it there's something that's really can be deeply satisfying about the novels of Julian Barnes. The ones I've read, at least, have a sort of deep, reverent, moral seriousness about them that's sort of warm and inviting and conversational without having to come off as intellectually cold and distancing, which is sometimes the way you can you can read in a novel if you do have a lot of that sort of moral seriousness. It's a really tough balance to pull off. So when this is combined with sort of the witty insouciance of books like A History of the World in Ten and a Half Chapters, which I've also reviewed on this channel, it's been several years, but it's up there, uh, or the existentially searching but deeply satisfying uh, the Sense of an Ending uh, review also on this channel, both of which are also on Goodreads if you prefer to read the text instead of uh, watch this face. Uh, we can start to see why Barnes's novels make for such memorable, enjoying reading experiences. This book really strikes a different chord and uh, intentional pun, I guess. Uh, it's a triptych of heavily biographical sketches in the life of, as I said, Dmitry Shostakovich, probably Russia's greatest composer of the 19th century, excuse me, uh, 20th century, if not the greatest composer ever, at three points in his life. So the first point is the 1936 denouncement of one of his works in Pravda, the uh, Russian sort of um, state machine, propaganda machine at the time, where a minister of the arts basically pointed out a piece of Shostakovich and said, this goes against what we believe as social realists for X, Y, and Z reasons. And then there was the incident in 1948 where he was uh, forced to attend uh, a sort of a, an artistic get-together in New York City as a Russian music, musical attaché. And then in 1960, when he was finally successfully bullied by Russian officials into joining the Communist Party. Barnes uses... By the way, if you notice anything about those years, I'll say them again, 1936, 1948, and 1960, they're each separated by exactly a dozen years, 12 years. I have no idea if that is just a coincidence <laughs> or if I overlooked the significance of that in the book. As far as I can tell, there's no real significance. I mean, there are 12 semitones in an octave, 
Um, I don't know if I'm reading too much into the number 12 there. If you know more about the significance of the difference of 12 between those three dates, please let me know in the comments. Barnes uses each of those three years, those three moments, in the composer's life in order to explore the issues that one would expect to be fundamental uh, to a fictionalized account of Shostakovich's uh, creative life. The creativity under the strain of capricious despotism, the constant fear of being forever disappeared with a knock on your door in the middle of the night, and just how far you can push that artistic bar before, or if even at all, without signing your own death warrant. Indeed, more than anything else, it's really the universality of these questions, and the answers to the extent to which Shostakovich's life can provide them, which saves this book from being more than just mere biography. Which really brings me to my biggest critique of the book. I think it's the biggest problem, and I'm wholly ready to admit that this just might come down to my preferences, both literary and aesthetic, on my own personal part, is that this reads much more like a biography of Shostakovich than it does a novel. However, it is uh, sold as fiction in bookstores. In fact, it comes off as a meticulously researched biography, one so true to the facts and circumstances of Shostakovich's life that the only thing really novel here are the thoughts, memories, and anxieties that Barnes puts into Shostakovich's head. In the postscript, Barnes even cites Elizabeth Wilson's book, Shostakovich, A Life Remembered, from 19... 94, and the composer's own eponymously titled memoirs as two books for which he is especially grateful, uh, seemingly grateful for having referenced and be able, uh, being able to draw from, I'm guessing. But while being able to construct the inner voice of someone like Shostakovich is essential to being a good novelist, it's simply not enough to call it a novel, since novels are, for me at least, let me know if you disagree, um, are supposed to be predicated on artifice, inventiveness, and creativity instead of strictly verifiable historical information. In other words, Shostakovich's inner thoughts and voice are necessary for the novel, but they are far, far, far from sufficient. Because Shostakovich was actually an historical person means at least for me, that this book might have been more successful had it not taken the form of a novel. But at its deepest and most satisfying, The Noise of Time is about trying to tell the truth in a country where doing so is tantamount to suicide, where telling the truth and coming out alive isn't seen as a liberty or as a government protection, but rather just a happy accident. Imagine living in a world where the dissatisfaction with your poem, or symphony, or painting meant that your life now depended on the paranoid whimsy of the great leader. Whatever their form, stories like this need to be told and retold once again, not just for the purpose of making ourselves more intimate with history, but for that deep-seated need to see that such moral hellscapes never again see the light of day. Julian Barnes, The Noise of Time. I'll see you hopefully in uh, a few days. Bye, guys.